to be able not only for our kids but for their kids uh, you know just because a lot of times we we take for granted that we're together and then all of a sudden before you know it, it's gone and the family history goes I mean I, I really don't know like where my great-grandfather actually came from we're not really sure even where my grandfather's whole story was and I thought, that's terrible that in two generations we've we've lost a lot of my family history and I know your family history is very rich so well, there's some good there's some good stories I'm sure. So we wanted to just ask pretty much where um, uh, you know where you grew up, where your your folks were from, grandparents, what it was like growing up. So just the just the whatever you can tell us, we want to video we want to video document it. So well, my father was born in in Kentucky or, and uh, raised in Missouri, and um, my mother was from the West Coast, and um, she, she is related, her father was a minister, Southern Baptist minister, and uh, she is related to the uh, clay that invented the riverboat, steamboat. Oh, steamboat, whatever, okay, steamboat. yeah. And uh, I was born in Canton, Missouri, and when I was about two, we migrated to California. Okay. Now, how did your parents meet? I have no idea. I mean, if, if he was from Kentucky, she was from the West Coast. Well, so he, was a, he, he was in the Navy. Oh, okay. When he was stationed at Bremerton, Washington, they met there. And what brought them back to the Missouri? The, the military? or? No, when he got out of the service, then they went back there because he was a farmer. Okay. And uh, then uh, my mother was very well educated and, and was a piano teacher. Very, um, she wasn't a sailor. <laughs> part, but she married the same. Okay. And, uh, now, what part of Missouri was it? Um, it's too bad my brother isn't here because he um, would know all these. But um, I have a book on the Bullies. It's called Little Oki, and I'll give you that. Okay. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And Arthur? Pop Pop? Where were your parents born? And don't get My dad was born down around Bak Bakersfield, down in that area. I thought it was Los Angeles. LA. Yeah, Los Angeles. Yeah, and then uh, he was brought up here when he was a kid. And he, and, uh, and he was raised the rest of his life right here in Sacramento. In Mom's family was all in England, but I don't know where she was born at. Yes, you do. Over here on, uh, on uh, Highway 12. Oh, wait a minute. She was born right here in Jackson. No, not Jackson. Clement. Cl yeah, come in. Clements, which oh, okay. is right by Jackson. She was born there, and her father drove for the old meat company here. They were in the horse buggy days, and a horse kicked him in the head and killed him. Her father. He used to work oh, in the goodness. mines originally, but then when they moved to Sacramento, he went to work for a place that's been here for a hundred years. It was Kloss and Krause, and and uh, he was delivered delivered meat to different stores and a horse kicked him in the head and killed him. And and uh, But her family was related to Wrigley's for Wrigley Gum, right? What, who? Was me she was related to the Wrigley's well, the Wrigley Gum, yeah. Yeah, yeah on the Knob Hill San Francisco. San Francisco. Really? But she had a note one time, they, they, she had a word one time, her and her sister, they want him to come to England because there was, was an estate left to them. But they they couldn't afford to go over there, so they just wrote a letter and told them that they couldn't make it. Go ahead and do it over the wall. Who got it? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, it, then we moved. My dad moved to Folsom, and he was with the uh, at the, yeah, the got big boats were here, the dredgers, okay. gold dredgers, and he was a maintenance man for the gold dredgers until he was killed going home. Two two young people, the only thing he can remember is when he was, he was going home from work, and up right up here by Nimbus, why they, when he tried, he started passing him like that, and they made a dive for him, and he went, turned to the wheels like that, and the gear shift, and the Chevrolet pickup went up to him here, and he laid bedridden for three years until the poor bugger passed away. Wow. But all he could remember, told the highway patrol, it was just uh, well, where it was were a two brown car. A where there. were you born? Huh? Where were you born? Where was I born? Right here in the city of Fulton. 
Good old Folsom. Right in the city, Main Street, and and uh, the one that delivered me was a big nigger mammy. Because that's where the, she was in the Folsom. She took care of a lot of the people because that was, town was small then, you know. Yeah. And, and she wanted she wanted Violet was my her, his mother uh, to name name him Arthur Robert. Morton. Really? And mom said, no, I want to name him Arthur Harris Morton. But later in life, when we went to get Social Security and we got a we, uh, birth certificate, it said Arthur Robert. <laughs> so she wrote on there what she wanted yeah, to write? Yeah, but we had, we had went up to my mother and had her change it. <laughs> That's after we, after we were married. Well, oh, we, I'll tell you, when the time we went to, to uh, Mexico, then we had to take a birth certificate then. Oh, I guess maybe that was and that's it. it. Then that's when we got them. And then when I, looked around, I took it up to my mother, she said, no. <laughs> well, it's so funny because Cricket was a uh, court reporter at the time. And so she was the one that got us our birth certificate. When she found out it was Arthur Robert, she thought we'd been fibbing to her. Oh, all my years. goodness. And I hear you didn't even know. No. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> Too much. Now, what was your parents' names? My parents' name? My dad's name was was uh, Arthur L, and of course I was named after him. And then my mother was Van, uh, Violet, and her maiden name was Nolan. Nolan, okay. N -O -W -L -A -N -D. And Grandma, what was yours? And your... my father was Charles Wilbur, and I was named after him, Charlotte Wilma. Okay. And my mother's name was Elizabeth Manny. Okay. Manny. Great. And what was growing up like? What was growing up? Yeah. I ne believe me, this is the truth. I never lived till I met her. <laughs> That's the truth. I worked at the ground she walks on. Because when I, w I, I was in, just started high school in September. In November, I had an eye go out. I was sitting in school. My dad had just given me a star car. I don't know if you ever heard of him or not. They called the Durant later. later there were the Durant. Anyway, he gave me the car to take my brother and sister back to work, with, uh, back to school, because they was younger than me. And I was taking them, and about 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning at school, I had an eye go out. So they told me to get on home, and I took the car on home. And then I, I was, within a month or two, I was stone blind. Mm. And I was stone blind for six and a half to seven years. Yeah. I never seen daylight. And my, because uh, I remember they led me in when my sister graduated in June. Well, I, I had, they took me there, but I, I, I couldn't see nothing at all. And how old were you? I was 12. 12 years old. Yeah, I was, tw I was 12, 12, 13. I just started the high school. Then in 1937, you went to Green Brothers. Well, you'd been going there for treatments. But then you had, in 1938, you had a court, the first... Yeah, I had the first corneal transplant in the United States. Wow. They had the in Green 1947, Brothers. even after we were married, I got the second one. Now, I've, I've had six of them, plus seven other operations on the eyes to try to keep this from, it was leaking fluid. Mm. And they, and they worked on that every, every couple of months for over a year. And finally, the hospital over here told him to stop it and let that poor man live. Yeah. But you count your blessings. Yeah. What was growing up in Missouri like? I don't remember Missouri because I was only two when I left there. Okay. But um, we we were farmers out here. We lived at, uh, I was raised at Rioso. That's um, right out of Wheatland. If you don't know where Wheatland is, it's south of Marysville, about 10, 15 miles and um, went to a little one-room school. Well, maybe two rooms, but it was great. But then uh, we were farmers, and so we worked hard on the farm. And when I was 14, I, my sister and I, Virginia, came to Sacramento and went to school here. And then I've never been back home since. Uh, now, what did your family farm? Yeah. And, and other extra things, but not to live on, you know, with the peaches and the uh, cattle. They did. And uh, we, we separate our own milk and we'd haul it about 10 miles for the truck to pick it up. Wow. And 
I worshiped the ground my father walked on, worked, walked on. I really did because he, he was so good to us kids. He really was. Well, the poor bugger, like I say, was killed when the gear shift. Well, he lived, like I say, in a bed for three years, but near. But I mean, he was r really good to us. Uh, it was out of this world, and and you know, I cost him for every penny that poor man made, because for three years I had to be in San Francisco for two to three weeks, and then home one week or so, and then back to San Francisco. This went on for three years, try, trying to uh, fix me to try to come out. But of course, I didn't. I had to. Then they asked me to be a guinea pig donation from I, which those days they do, people didn't donate stuff. But I said I didn't have nothing to, I could care less because I was, went, went to end it once my mother caught me. But I, they they the said, the, the doctor down there asked me to be, be a guinea pig. And so they sent me to San Francisco and then I, I had that the operation. I was, I, I got the book now if ever you want to see it. It's worth seeing, but when I had my first operation, when we uh, it, 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 I wanted to go so bad. Truth, I wanted to go so bad. My folks used to take me down here to my cousin that lived right near her place, by McClatchy High School. So the kids were born, and her and another cousin. Your cousin. My cousin was a cheerleader for the McClatchy High School. So they were going to go to a football game. So they says, come on and go, Art. Now listen, they took this eye out and put in a saucer and tried scratching it. And that didn't work, but I could see just barely daylight from dark. Yeah. So I went with them, and we went to see the football game. I couldn't see a football game. So I was in the seat, and, and, and they would jump up and plot like a mad, and so was I. But I don't know what I plotted for, because I don't know yet what was there. And, and, and uh, it, 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 it was a horrible life to go through. It really was. The kids used to walk me. Let's play his, blind man he, bluff, because he can't see and walk me through puddles of water. Mm. But he, uh, his cousin just lived uh, about a block from me, and we were best of friends. Okay. And that's how I met him. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, because he had come down to spend the weekend with him, with the with these this family. Yeah. And uh, we met and um, we hit it off. Yeah. So we went from there. He was blind when I married him. Really? We got sixty three years of married life. Wow. Sixty three years. That's incredible. And I still worship this girl. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Don't keep saying that. <laughs> Well, what she did for me and helped me, of all the operations, I've had lots of operations, yeah. you know, and what she did for me has been out of this world. Very selfless, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, you count your blessings. Yeah. Well, that was good. And you've got three wonderful, wonderful children. children. Yeah. Three. Ken was born a year and three or four months after we were married. And then a year to the day, Cricket, I mean, uh, Jean was born. Her birthday's the 29th of June and Ken's the 30th. And um, then two years later for then cricket, two huh? or two and a half years later, Cricket was born, okay. Jan. And they are all three just give me nothing but thrills. What is the trick of raising su successful children? Try to see their side of everything and uh, before you jump. And um, communication. We didn't have the drug problems that everybody has now, but in those days it was probably something else. I don't remember what it was now. And like when the girls, when the uh, boy with the green hair came out, the movie came out, my girls wanted to have green hair. So I went to the beautician and asked her what we could do to have let them have the green hair. And then when I said they could do it, they only lasted one day and they washed it out. <laughs> but you know, 
know, you have to see there. You have to give in to them once in a while. Yeah. But then when you, when your morals are, are uh, faced with what you don't want them to do or your integrity, then you have to put your foot down. Yeah. And that's my attitude. Now his was more or less. I said you couldn't do it. Well, <laughs> I don't always think that is what you need to do. With yeah. You. I think you have to explain. And uh, I don't. I can't remember when I ever spanked one of my kids. Yeah. But I know he did. But I just. I, I just uh, marvel at my children. I just can't believe that they're where they are today in yeah. this world. Well, They're one thing about every them. move we made, the kids were right with us. Oh yeah, we didn't. Need and we made we made sure when Mama had to work, you know, because I had my some of my operations, and Mama had to work. And we used to. What, what, this is the truth. That one time when she was only, we was only clearing seventeen dollars a week, and 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 uh, that was all. Because by the time we made a babysitter and everything else, you know, and and it, it was just. But seventeen dollars in those days was, was worth, a lot of money. You know, you, you know, can't compare it to today. Yeah, it yeah. could go a little longer. That's right. We, exactly. we didn't have we didn't it have fits. enough money to go out and spend. But I I explained to my children one year I forget what they wanted, but I explained to the kids I said kids I can't afford it. I mean I just don't have the money. And we sat down and talked with them and explained everything to them. We didn't. It's, it's, go out and borrow something, you know what I mean, to try to give to them or pay, put money. We didn't have money down. And the man I worked for at that time was in the grocery store, and and uh, he told us, come down, he told us, he, when, when, the, he, when the kids were born then, when I had my last, that second operation, he come down and he said, you people take, get whatever you want, and just take it home, we'll bill you later. Well, I didn't want to, we didn't want to be billed later because you, you're forever paying it off. Yeah. So but we got by and we, we've lived a life that there's not many couples live because we've never had a real argument, a real argument to this day. Well, you've seen a lot of you traveling. You may not believe that, but it oh, is yes. the truth. Yeah. But In 1972, we bought our home and uh, we did a lot of weekend um, excursions, you know, and went fishing an awful lot. All of our life we've gone fishing because that's about all he could do. And um, then when I retired in 84, then we took three months and went around the edge of, ca of the United States. Oh, the United and, States. But didn't see it all, of, naturally, we didn't see it all, but we saw. And then uh, about uh, three years later, then we went and went through the middle of the United States and, and saw that. Wow. But we, uh, I would love to still be doing it, but I just can't. Oh, yeah. What was your, some of your favorite memories as well, you my, traveled? My favorite place, I'm not saying I'd want to live there, but the, the most beautiful was Upper State New York, mm. along the um, uh, Lawrence, St. Lawrence River, yeah. the Thousand Area area, and of course the tourist trap of, of Niagara Falls. Mm. But the Niagara Falls is just, you can't believe it. And then uh, along the Cape, too. There's so much history there where yeah. the Plymouth Rock is, and the, the tourist things uh, didn't, but I could visualize maybe uh, what, why these things were built and why they were done, you know. Yeah. And uh, now he likes Florida around uh, Cypress and what have you because well, there's a lot of Cypress Cypress Garden with oh, those yeah. famous water skiers. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, that, that was my favorite. <laughs> but, but it's... Um, there's a lot of history in the east, and everybody should go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, more so than out here. We yeah. have we have the gold and what have you, but that's not uh, the foundation. You know, the foundation is back there. Yeah, to go back and see houses that are 250 yes. years old and things. Yes, and they're just gorgeous. Battlefields of the Civil War. We didn't get to. That's the one thing that uh, that I always wanted to go back. We didn't get to go there, but uh, we did see <coughs> in uh, in. Um, Louisiana, we did see where the battles were there. Yeah. In, in the southern, you know, the yeah. end, uh, independence, you know. But, uh, and that was huge. Yeah. That's huge. Every state is represented there. Mm -hmm. but we thank the good Lord. We, we did what we did. and just took, we started out right up north and went all the way around the whole United States. It took over three months. 
just took our time when we seen anything. My cousin followed us in his motor home. Whenever we seen anything, we had CB radios, and we'd say, well, there's a battleship or something here, the John F. Kennedy battleship and that. And so we'd only gone 50 miles, and we stayed there for three days. And whatever we seen, we stopped because we knew darn well we would never get back. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's the way we did it when we went through the, through the center there. We've missed six states. That's it. Mm -hmm. Out of all the states, just six. Yeah. That's a great time. We've been to Hawaii. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Been, yeah and been, Panama. And I know we, you went to... We went, yeah, we went on a cruise, and we went to Mexico. We spent three weeks in Mexico. Yeah, I caught a marlin down there. You're quite the fisherman. Yes. Actually, both of you are, are, are really the trophy fisher well, folks. I don't know about trophy, but we love to fish. Now, when did you start fishing? From well, what, it, since you were little, or we had friend. No, we had friends that were that uh, he worked on the high, building highways, and they were stationed in. Um, they had a job up at Mount Shasta, and we went up to visit them. And they wanted to go trout fishing, but we didn't have any gear. So we went down in the town of Mount Shasta and bought him a trout pole and some gear, and then it just evolved from there. And when do you think, what I year was that? To, to, to supply Safeway. What year was that? Yes. Well, the children were real tiny, so, uh, you know, probably, well, we've been married 63 years, so probably maybe um, 50 years ago. Wow. A little more. Or more. Yeah, more. Now, what's some of your favorite places to go fishing? Well, right now, Stampede, yeah. because that's where all of the kokanee are. Oh, okay. And then we like to go down in the Delta and fish for catfish or stripers. Is, and is kokanee pretty much your favorite fish? To yes. Yeah. Yes. It broke my heart to have to give up from fishing in the ocean. Yeah. We fished there for years. We fished all the way from uh, uh, in Oregon. Winchester Bay. Winchester Bay in Oregon, and I've had my boat all the way up in, down to Monterey and fished out of there. I fit, fish, fish lots of long Mexico where I got my marlin, but I didn't take my boat down there. Well, we took the boat and went across to Catalina, though. Yeah, we okay. took it and went across to Catalina, the one boat we still got. And that boat we have is 44 years old this last November. Really? And we still got it. Still going. And it's still good, good I'll yeah. tell you. But wow. you have to take care of them now. There's a there's fourth motor on it, though. Well, yeah. More than three. Yeah, there's a... As long as the motor's good, it's floating right along. Huh? As long as the motor's good, it's floating right along. Yeah, right. It'll still be 24 to 27 miles an hour. But, That's good. But, uh, but, it, it, but uh, you kids the, have our little boat. Yeah. Well, I hope you use it. Yeah, yeah. We now, tried. Pop Pop, you were a piano player. Yeah, I at one time, just before I went blind, I had a, a six-piece band from from school, and I played around the country, little, little clubs around here. And the best one place we ever played, the guy had a big long chicken house. He was going to make it, have chickens in it, and he sanded all the floor and put that stuff on it for dancing. And we went there, and my dad hauled a piano into this place, and we played till midnight, one o'clock. And then they took up a collection, and had us play for a couple more hours. We didn't get home till early in the morning. <laughs> and I was, I was, that's, that was just before that's, I went. That's by. old time. Dancing. That is good time, yeah. <laughs> and then I, when Babe and I were married, I had my band up at uh, Orangevale, and I and I rented the hall, and I took the band over there, and we split whatever I got through the door. And Mama was downstairs cooking the cooking the meals for the supper, you know, for midnight. And that for there. Oh my goodness! Anything to make money. That, yeah, <laughs> that would be it. So, did you play while you were married? You guys would go and, and huh? play a little bit. Uh, no, not really. No. No, he um, uh, he had this little band, and he'd play in nightclubs out in North Sacramento. Okay. And he'd get paid for that. Yeah. That's about it. But and he, but he didn't do that all the time. Just. What do they call him now? He would have a gig and uh -huh. he'd go out there. Okay. If you want to see it, Ken asked me if he could have my accordion and i give it to him. I got one right from Italy with oh. my name on it. 
and, and I played accordion. And when I was playing the piano, so I would get up, and then with the certain songs that I knew real well in accordion, I'd go down on the floor and walk around playing the accordion. The band would keep backing me up with that. <laughs> That's great. But I wore that strap to where you. It's, well, Marie, <clears throat> Marie has your piano now. Who does? Marie. Yes, she does. Yeah. yeah She's right. learning to play on on your old piano. She was. Yeah. Yeah, that piano was bought at the the fair. When the fair was out here on Stockton Boulevard, that's how old it is. And if you notice on the where the music, the, the uh, holds the music up, there's a crack where it's got a design on it. Uh -huh. And that was why we got it because that was crack was there, and, we, and they knocked about two or three hundred dollars off of it because of that. And that crack is still, still there, there, and the rest right. of the piano is still Just working as, great. Right, yeah. right. I started teaching piano. Modern music, not classical, but modern music. And then, then they stopped me. After we bought the uh, another piano well, before we, that one, the piano we built it on. Uh, uh, we had a, a garage, you know. Well, that, we built a studio. We got it. all. We made a regular studio on it, and we bought put glass instead of the garage doors and everything else. Studio, and then that doctor made me stop it because. Uh, one time I had to rush back to San Francisco because the wives went out, and then. <coughs> Just too much reading, I couldn't hack it. Through. But Ken was glad he got a room. <laughs> <laughs> but then we, I used to take music down to Sherman and Clay's in Sacramento and buy a piece of shoot music, and go home and take a magnifying glass and, and put it on a regular scale sheet you have for, to, to write music and put it on there with a grease pencil so I could see them. You know. <laughs> Then they would take it back and, and give you yeah. 25 cents for it. They, really? <laughs> they'd buy it back for half price. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. You were you were making money back then trying yeah, right. to work that out. That's well, good. I love baby. I hate to give that up. Yeah. They forced me to give it up. Yeah. Uh, we lived in Carmichael in those days, and the, uh, Ken went to school uh, out there, and well, so did the girls. And then we moved, and he got. His job was moved from North Sacramento over on um, 85th, 84th and um, Fruit Ridge Road. So we moved back in Sacramento because that was just too much driving for him. Okay. And um, so then I, I brought us to work and then I'd go on over to Campbell Soup and I worked there for 34 years. 34 years at Campbell? 34, uh huh. What did you do? I was a, um, a clerk, a uh, receiving clerk for about two years. Then I became a secretary for about 25 years, and then the rest of the time I was a buyer. Uh -huh. And I helped buy the fresh vegetables and um, bought all of the um, nuts and bolts, so to speak, tractors and trucks for our mushroom farm down in Pescadero. Oh, wow. And I worked for And uh, I, I really loved my job, but when I became 62, he'd already been retired for about six or seven years. So when I became 62, I decided that uh, I needed to play a little bit, and uh, so because I was uh, did a lot of overtime in the summertime because of the tomatoes, because mm -hmm. I was secretary in the agriculture department. But when my boss passed away, why well, then they did away with that department, and we all were part of the purchasing department. Okay. And that's how it became purchasing. I wasn't a purchasing agent; I was just a buyer. Okay. I mean, even though I couldn't, couldn't see too very good, I worked for United Grocers for 28 and a half years, and they were fabulous to me. Mm -hmm. They were, they really were, you know, delivering groceries to all the stores and stuff. And, yeah. And, and for 28 and a half years, well, and you didn't they build a new. You didn't deliver the groceries. Huh? You, you didn't deliver the groceries. You were in charge of the warehouse. Well, and, yeah. And, and, and loaded and them on the trucks. First, the okay. dry groceries, the dry grocery part of it. And then when they built the, built the big frozen food plant. Then I was I was put ahead of that. I was mm -hmm. the big wheel there, and I, I was there until I got to where I was having a problem hearing, you know. And I had to designate a lot of work, like to my the customers, and or my drivers and stuff like that. So I clapped in the middle of the floor one morning over at the big office, and they hauled me over to the hospital, and and I had had a complete breakdown. And the big wheel, they give me some shots, and they brought me home and called Mama over to the job. And then, so they told me to, uh, when I went back there, the doctors had told me I was only going to get worse in time. Mm -hmm. yeah, I couldn't take that, so 
they've took the uh, 